Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White, and I'm coming to you from Utah, USA. And I must say that I had great plans today, huge plans today, to do some pickling. And I was going to do pickled eggs with beets. And then I went to get ready to get things, and then I went, oh, well, I don't have any pickling spice for the bread and butter pickles. So off to the store I went. And then I got back, and it was so hot. Anyway, um, I put everything away. And um, then I remembered, oh, my goodness, today is my great niece's birthday. I'm supposed to Zoom. Oh, how do I Zoom? I don't know how to Zoom. I don't even know what to do, you know, so I have to get my sister on the phone and and she's got her son-in-law and he's telling me what to do and we're trying to figure out how to get the sound on and oh my gosh. Anyway, and then you have to imagine that they're doing this social distancing birthday party. So everybody's on Zoom and it's like this, you can't tell what people, I, I mean, I couldn't tell what everybody was saying. It was just a lot of everybody talking over each other. And anyway, by the time I got off of that, my brain was so fried. I'm like, happy birthday. Aunt Gloria loves you. Anyway. Um, so I was going to do all that. And um, I, when I went to the store, I picked up a head of cauliflower and a beautiful red bell pepper and uh, three cucumbers and this a little bag of uh, the little baby carrots and uh, uh, two Vidalia onions and the pickling spice and then uh, I'm telling you I'm just I'm just fried but I got up early this morning because I have this brain injury so I don't have like a normal sleeping anything. I mean, I can be awake for 24 hours, 30 hours, you know, then sleep for 6 and get up, or sleep for 8 and get up, or sleep for 12 and get up, or sleep like 18 hours and get up. It's nuts. Anyway, um, so I got up last night, probably it was around 1 o'clock, and so about 4.30 this morning, I, I was hungry, so I started, I made some French toast. So I've had a big, long day, and needless to say, there will not be any pickling anything today because <laughs> I feel totally pickled already. I hope everybody is having a good day and that they're safe and they're feeling good and they're healthy. And I wish you all the best. I love you all so much. And Les, your garden looks great. I can't believe you're just getting started with this. Maybe I misunderstood you because you look like you've been gardening forever. And Reagan, haven't seen your garden in a couple of days, huh? And I know, but you had all that rain. Don't worry. Now you said that the sun is out. And it looks like you're going to have some good weather for a couple of days. So we know from past videos that your garden's going to have to dry out a little bit. And then I'm sure you're going to get in there and start spraying and dusting. And, you know, I'm sure it's a very happy place for the bugs right now. But you'll get rid of them. And I can't wait to see what else is happening there in your garden. And Mr. Tom, I didn't watch your last video yet, but I will. And um, so I apologize for that. But... I don't know where the time goes. As as you get older, it's like <laughs> time speeds up, but at the same time, it slows down. Uh, I think I think time goes fast, but you go slow. So I can't get anything near done what I used to could get done. And uh, anyway, but I do the best I can. And it's not what you have; it's what you do with what you have. And so every day I try to do something. And um, today I went to the store <laughs> and got my stuff ready to do pickling. And maybe that will happen tomorrow. But I did get my new pressure cooker in. Um, I had ordered one online through Google. 
and um, they said that it, they wouldn't have it to de deliver until the 27th of May. So I went, well, okay, because I had looked everywhere and everybody was selling out of them, so I was kind of in a panic. And um, anyway, it was a 23-quart uh, Presto presser, pressure canner, and then the 27th, I didn't get an email that they shipped it, so the next day I looked, and they canceled my order <laughs> after they made me wait for three weeks. Anyway, it worked out great because um, I went online and I started looking to see if anybody else had the 23 quart, you know, Presto canner, and I was looking and looking, and then I thought, well, you know, Alaska Prepper said that the the tea fowl canner was good, so I tried looking for that, and everybody's, that one's all sold out. So I thought, well, what else presser, Presto pressure canner? So I found a 16-quart pressure canner on um, Walmart at a Walmart that's like, would be the third Walmart from me, but they had one in stock, and I had um, money in one bank account and money in a b other bank account and money at, on my uh, credit at Amazon. So I'm like, oh, geez, you know, you can't do two credit card transactions for one thing, right? So uh, I had ordered seven cases of pint uh, wide mouth jars, mason jars, and I had ordered two um, cases of the um, quart jars, wide mouth. And anyway, uh, the the seven pints, the seven cases of the pints came. And then um, the quarts never did come. And I'd gotten an email saying they were going to be here by between May 11th and the 15th. Well, they didn't show up. And I kept forgetting every day to call and sometimes sleep all day and miss being able to call. Anyway, my mind's like a steel trap. Nothing gets in and uh, nothing gets out. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some of you that can, <laughs> that can identify with that. But anyway, the jars, I finally called the people that... Uh, was I had ordered them through Walmart, but they had a third party, and if I had known this, I would have never done it. But when I placed the order with Walmart, I didn't see anywhere that it said they were going to have a third party vendor fill that. Anyway, um, but make a long story short, I called Walmart and they refunded my money since I hadn't gotten the jars. And so I thought, oh, Wait a minute, did that money from Walmart get in my bank account? So I hurried up and called the bank. Yep, it was there. Oh, yay, I have $85 in my account. I need $83.89. Perfect. So I placed the order, got the last one that they had, and um, went and got it at the um, Walmart in Clinton. And um, it was so weird because I'm in my wheelchair, right? So while I'm in there in Walmart, I'm like, it was like being in Disneyland because I haven't been anywhere in so long. And, um, but I have my mask on and I went around and I got things and got some canning salt and I can't remember what all stuff I got. But anyway, all that I piled on the back in bags on the back on the handles of my wheelchair. But then I had this pot and I didn't know how big it was going to be well I had brought a piece of rope with it with me so that I could make a, you know how you can make a handle around a box if you were wrapping a, a Christmas present or something and you were putting the ribbon around it how you can you know you could pick it up that way so that's what I had brought the rope for but anyway the pot was too big <laughs> so bless this man's heart he went and got three bags, and, and we tried putting putting this pot in these bags, and it kept tearing in the bottom. So he said, wait a minute, and he went and got this other tough bag. So we got it in the bag, and then I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to carry this bag like this? 
So I wrapped the rope around it, made a slip knot, and pulled it up tight, twisted the bag, top of the bag up, twisted the rope around that, then tied it with a, a slip knot, and um, carried it in front of me all the way home. And I got to the bus stop. And they changed the bus schedule. They reduced the, the number of buses that are running. And so I waited at the bus stop for an hour in the heat. Oh my gosh, it was so hot. But anyway, I got my pot. <laughs> and now I'm too pooped to use it, but it's beautiful. But what I did learn, and I want to tell you guys, is the 23-quart pressure cooker, okay, when you load that baby up, if you double load her, if you're doing pints, you double stack it, or they call it double deck, where you put a row of jars and then you put another row of jars on top of that. Well, when you do that and you put enough water in there to pressure can it, it weighs over 50 pounds. Yeah. And it says <laughs> to call your stove's manufacturer to make sure that it's okay to put that much weight on the burner. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I so lucked out. God takes such good care of me. He knew I wouldn't be able to handle that 23 pound, that 23 quart pot. And he also knew my stove wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't handle that either. And I'm in an apartment, so it's not like, you know, um, I could do anything different. So, um, so it was a blessing that they canceled the order, and it was a blessing that I found it online. It was a blessing. It was the last one. It was a blessing that the money went back in my account for those jars and that I was able to order that last one. And then it was a blessing that I got to go on the bus down there and pick it up. And, and so I have it now, and I'm very happy with it. And I, I read the reviews on this one, and women were just raving about it. And a lot of the women said they were older now, and they had had the 23 quart, and they loved it. But now that they're older, they really couldn't handle that big, heavy pot. So they said this one was perfect, and I went, oh. Man, another blessing. I am so blessed. I have so many blessings. I have blessings coming out of my ears. I could tell you guys stories about God rescuing me. It's, it's amazing. But when you turn yourself over to him and, and you're up against the rock, and I'm telling you, you feel like the enemy, well, I shouldn't say that because with George, it, that's so bad. But anyway, that your enemy has you pinned and you feel like there's like, ah, what am I supposed to do? Don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, do not panic. Because there is nothing that comes at you. It doesn't matter what it is. Poor health, bad finances, relationships, kid problems. You know, money problems, it doesn't matter. Because when you put your trust in God and you tell him, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm there. It's amazing what will happen. Because I'll tell you this one story. I was just had moved here to Utah and I was here for like two years and so um, the mo little bit of money that I had got from selling my house in California I came out here with it well um, I was paying all my rent and a car note my, my truck note really and anyway it got down to where my daughter was paying my phone bill and the water bill was due and I didn't have the money for it and it was going to get turned off the next day. The rent was due the next day. I was $150 short on the rent. $45 I needed for the water bill. <laughs> and I just sat down and I prayed. And anyway, 
so now I'm in the light. I just realized I was sitting here in the dark. Um, and my phone's battery started dying, so I had to get up and turn the light on, which controls the power for the phone charger. Anyway, so that night was the 31st, and I just turned it all over to God. I said, whatever it is you want me to do at this point, because I'd done had West Nile virus, couldn't work anymore, spent my life savings, and um, was right when the housing market was crashing, lost so much money in my house, walked away with enough to come here, and then all my money had run out. And I said, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm there. Whatever it is that you have for me to do, whatever, wherever it is you want me to go, I'm there. I went to bed. Next morning, I woke up. It was two minutes to nine o'clock. As soon as I woke up, I was like, I wonder what's going to happen today. I was like a kid on Christmas morning. I couldn't wait to see what God had for me. Anyway, at 9 o'clock, the doorbell starts ringing. So I go to the front door, and it's my neighbor, Charlene. And she said, I went down and paid my water bill, and she handed me the receipt, and I paid yours too. Oh, Charlene, thank you so much. And then um, I had listed a dresser, a nice, beautiful wooden solid oak dresser. Um, it's more like a buffet um, dresser. Anyway, um, I had put it on for a hundred dollars on like, I don't know, Craigslist or something. Anyway, so Charlene's leaving at two minutes to 10 and the phone started ringing and I said, Oh, Charlene, I have to get that. I don't have an answer machine. And so I went, let her out and went to the phone and it was a lady and she wanted to come see the dresser. I said, oh, great, yeah, come on. So she gets there and she tells me, well, I was supposed to have a meeting today in Salt Lake, but it was canceled so I could come out here and see your dresser. <laughs> okay, so she comes in and she walks past my antique dresser into the dining room and she sees the buffet dresser and, um, she says, well, I was thinking of something more upright. And I said, oh, and I pointed back around the corner to my antique dresser. And she said, I said, like that? And she goes, yeah. I said, she says, how much do you want for that? I said, I'd take 150. She goes, well, let me go out to my truck and see if I have that with me. She comes back and hands me $150. So we dump everything in the dresser out on the bed. <laughs> And I helped her load this thing in her pickup truck. She had a little Toyota pickup truck with a cab on the back, a camper shell. And we fit that thing in there, and it was like an inch space on both sides, in the front and at the back when you put the tailgate up and close the, <laughs> the hatch. And so by 12 o'clock, the water bill was paid, and so was the rent. The next day, I got a letter that I had been approved for housing that I had applied for. And so <laughs> that was great because the very next month, I would have been in the same boat again. <laughs> so God provided a new home for me, and I've been here. And what I do and what I'd done for a long time, but I had to give it up for a while because it was getting to me. Um, I, I, I smoke, and I have a dog, and I'd go sit. You have to, can't smoke around the apartment building. You have to go out by the street. And um, there would be people walk by, and I'm, I'm really sensitive to when people have trouble. I've always been that way. But anyway, that I'd see them coming. I could almost feel them. And I'd say, hey, how you doing? And they'd say, nah. I said, no, really. How are you? How are you doing? And then they would stop. And they'd come back. And they would talk to me. 
and they would tell me all their troubles. They would just tell me everything that was on their mind, everything that was bothering them, everything that had happened to them, everything. And I would just, you know, listen. And then I'd, I'd say, well, have you tried this or you tried that? You know, God loves you. Don't worry. And, 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 and I'd talk to them about God. And then they would leave, and they felt great. All they needed was somebody to listen to them, to just hear what they were needing to say to someone who cared. And so I did that for like two years straight. Now you got to imagine, when you smoke, you're, you're going to smoke more than one cigarette in a day. So I'd be out there five or six times in a day, and there'd be five or six people that would stop and talk to me. Sometimes it's older people, sometimes a young person. I'm, you know, teenagers, sometimes little 10 year olds, you know, um, and woman, man, it didn't matter. You know, I, I could tell when, when they walked by and I could sense them coming. And so I did that for about two years and then I just kind of got burned out it started weighing me down. So I took a break from it. And then, and then, so I said, God, you know, I need a break. What else you got, you know? So then it was it's the strangest thing, the way God gives you things to do. If you're open, you know, if you're just open and it's just like, whatever you want me to do, I'm there. So the next thing that I got into was when the neighbors would move out, they all knew me because I was so friendly with everyone. And so they'd come down and they'd knock on my door and they'd say, you know, I'm going to be moving and I've got some